and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam, I would like to greet you with the greetings of Islam. Uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Of course, tonight uh, is, uh, you know, we're almost finish up, finishing up the month of Muharram, episode 23 of hashtag LNT. Of course, I haven't said this in a while, of course, with the one and only Ahmed Ali. Now, tonight, black on black, I've been wearing that since the beginning of Muharram. But tonight is a very special topic. Tonight, uh, we're talking about how different man and women be and you know what's what's imposed on the women but sometimes also imposed on the men as well to what degree we're gonna have to find out but after we go check out what's trending come back to you guys very short Welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, uh, a horrible limo crash took place in New York, killing 20 people. Officials say that it's the worst uh, transport tragedy in over a decade. Now, the driver of the modified limo uh, that crashed uh, in update, I'm sorry, in upstate uh, New York, uh, Andrew uh, Como, the governor of that time, he says. Uh, did not have the appropriate driver's license uh, to be operating that vehicle. Uh, so, as you can see right there, he also said that the vehicle, which was a US, uh, SUV modified into a limo, was inspected by the New York State Department of Transportation last month and failed inspection. It failed inspection and was not supposed to be on the road. Yeah, he probably went and got it off, you know, the next, uh, some next level uh, mechanic who gave him, who passed him the inspection, which, you know, all, all Middle Eastern do. Hope he wasn't Middle Eastern, though. Uh, but uh, that's it for what's trending. Let's go jump into tonight's topic. again I do welcome everyone joining us tonight now you know the two genders of mankind you know the male and the female at least I hope those are the two genders out there you know I, I, don't, I hope there's no third gender well now on Google they give you three choices uh, it's either your male female or maybe I don't know maybe what uh, or other sorry other uh, maybe maybe I don't know it's others not maybe uh, but you know they're, they're dissimilar in many ways I mean God has created the female body to be, you know, um, to be, you know, different, different than mine, absolutely different than mine, uh, you know, and, and inshallah, different than Ayjasim's body and Salman's body, I hope, uh, you know, I, I hope they're different than Ayjasim's body. But I think you guys all mean, you get what, I, what I'm trying to say right now, so we'll just leave it at that. But since there's a major difference in shape, uh, there has to be, a difference in how each gender presents themselves. Let's say, you know, you go to the gym for those, uh, uh, my friends who go to Canada or whatever, you know, whatever, just in the West, UK, US, Canada, you go to the gym, it's, you, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, you know, you see a shirtless young man lifting weights, you know, with a six pack. You know, it's, it's okay, you see that. But you never see a shirtless woman, topless woman, nothing on top, you know, lifting dumbbells and just, you know, doing a couple of reps. You never see that. Why? Because she knows if she do uh, do that, if she does that, uh, then one, she'll get ar arrested for public nudity with the exception of a few countries. Uh, but she will also be a victim of sexual harassment. Now, obviously, a woman doesn't have to be naked uh, to be sexually harassed. She can also be covered and still get sexually harassed, as we can see in the news. But... It goes to say that how, um, how much we cover or how much they cover their body has an impact and absolutely it does. Now, you might ask why the double standards? Well, we have to go back to when I said God has created uh, the two sexes differently. Now, when he did, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when God did create the two sexes differently, he also imposed a type of covering for all women, a.k.a hijab but what exactly is hijab and more importantly what is the proper hijab 
That's why tonight on hashtag LNT, Ali Jassim asks you guys, what is hijab? What is the hijab? Very simple question. Ali Jassim wants to know. He doesn't know the answer. But that's why he's, he's begging me right now, uh, telling me to tell you guys to pick up the phones uh, and dial the number shown right there, plus 9647740671836, and let us know what you think about tonight's question. What is the hijab? What is hijab? Ali Maytham, do you know what hijab means? No, all right. I'm Mustafa, nothing. All right, let's take a quick break, come back to you guys very short. Once again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, before the break, we presented the question that's right there at the bottom. It's a four word question. What is the hijab if someone comes up to you right now you muslim lady uh, and of course ali jasim if there's a girl someone's going to come to them and ask but you know if someone comes up to the ladies right now who are wearing hijab and he asks or she asks what is that thing you're wearing on your head if you say hijab then they're going to just be confused if you say headscarf well duh it is a headscarf but you got to explain what it is you got to tell people what hijab is. So the same way you answer that person, you pick up the phone and answer us tonight live from the Holy City of Karbala, hashtag LNT episode 23. Now, the question for tonight, what is the hijab? The number to call in at via WhatsApp, toll free, is plus 9647740671836. And let us know what you think about tonight's question. We're also live on Facebook, so you guys can go uh, check us out. But Let's go way back in history. Like we're talking about the origin of hijab. And if you think it's in uh, after hijra or with the Prophet, then think again. We're going way back. Now sources mention that the first record, uh, recorded instance of veiling or something that covers the head and body uh, dates back to the Assyrian legal text uh, from the 13th century BCE. Now, it was restricted to noble women. That means that slaves uh, and, and poor women were forbidden to wear any head covering. Um, now, in both ancient empires of Greece and Rome, there is an evidence and many evidences that point to the fact of various degrees of head coverings worn by females. Now, practically in Rome, particularly in Rome, uh, it seems that head coverings uh, were associated with prayer and devotion. So that's why uh, they explained it that poor and slaves can't wear because they're not devout. They're slaves uh, of someone else. Only those noble women can get to wear the hijabs. While many Muslims think that the term or what they call hijab an Islamic thing, the fact is it's not actually an Islamic, it's, it's, it's one of the, uh, it's not only for Muslims, but we can't call it purely Islamic. That's what we need to do. Now, interesting, the, the, interesting, the, the, the Bible, the verses found in the Bible, in which Christians refer to uh, when they talk about head coverings, uh, when uh, they're praying to God or when they're in the church, um, is mentioned uh, from St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians. Now, Corinthians 11 verses 5, it says, and I quote, Every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. This is in Corinthians uh, 11 uh, verse 5. Now, the early Christians, uh, the early Christian women veiled their heads in church uh, and any time they were in public, and Christian women continued to maintain, as you can see right there, uh, continued to maintain this practice to some degree throughout the centuries uh, until the 19th or 20th century, uh, when the practice was rapidly, uh, you know, it, it declined. Now a student, or if you ask any student of uh, the Jewish tradition, would you know that head covering for Jewish women is encouraged by rabbis and religious leaders, if you can ask anyone. Now, religious Jewish women 
still cover their heads most of the time, even up until today, especially in the synagogues at weddings or religious events. You still see them. You know, it's, it's like the, you know, the, the convertible hijab uh, sisters. Uh, when they're listening to the Quran, the hijab comes up, and if they're not in religious gathering, the hijab comes down. So it's like the convertible, uh, the convertible hijab. But anyways, the Jewish tradition is a culture, not, re not a religious one. You know, hijab was observed uh, by women of the civilizations that preceded the Jews uh, and, you know, passed down to the Jewish culture. It was way before Islam, way before Christianity, and way before Judaism. Some Christians um, or some Christian women cover their heads on many religious occasions, while nuns cover their heads 24-7, or at least when they're in public, all the time. Now, the traditions of covering the heads dates back to thousands uh, of years before Muslims uh, or before Muslim scholars actually came forward and claimed hijab to be an Islamic, uh, an, an Islamic thing or Islamic dress code. Now, to throw this out there, hijab is not only for women. For those who think that hijab is for women, it's for men as well, you know. For me, I just can't go outside uh, not wearing, you know, I have to wear shorts, of course, but I can't like walk around uh, shirtless. It's not haram, but there are specific manners in where an individual should, or should pre be presented uh, in public. Um, the hijab of the man is mainly, is gazing down his eyes. Hijab al ayn you, what, what does hijab mean? Let's try and, and break this down. Hijab is a veil. When you put a veil between something, you can't see the other side. So when a woman puts this veil on her head, first she's honoring herself, and second, she's concealing that beauty, so to speak, from anyone out there that is not mahram to her. The same with men, hijab with men, you need, to con you need to conceal that six pack because, you know, ladies right now, they'd be falling for men that have six pack. Uh, although, you know, we can't say that, but it's, it's, it's reality. That's what's happening out there. Um, I just him says he has an eight pack. So, uh, you know, I, I don't believe that. But, you know, uh, but as I'm saying, men also have a type of hijab, a veil between his eyes and the haram. That's what you need to keep in mind. But we'll continue after the short break. again we do welcome everyone joining us tonight now before the break we were talking about hijab and trying to explain it and how and you know way back how it dates you know it dates uh, back to uh, ancient uh, you know in, in the Assyrian old text and it goes back to the ancient Rome and Greek now we also got to uh, the man the men's hijab uh, so up to now we can get, we can sort of get an idea of what hijab is, uh, and we can also understand that hijab is not, uh, or it, it is an Islamic dress code, but it's not exclusive for Islam. Other religions also possess this within their religions as well. Now, wearing the hijab for women isn't just a matter of simply putting on a piece of cloth on the head. We see a lot of women right now who, even if they're not Muslim, you know, uh, they, they just throw a scarf on their head and, you know, misunderstanding a lot of people. This portion, this, uh, this dress code, hijab, is misunderstood by a lot. What a lot of people think is that just by wearing the hijab, everything below the hijab is okay. Not to show, of course, but, you know, to, to, to wear whatever. Hijab is not just covering the head. Hijab is covering the heart from any uh, sin or from, from any act that may lead to sin. Right now, and I'm, I'm going to be frank with everyone, maybe someone, some people are going to get upset. If you were to go out, you know, maybe not in Iraq, but if you were to go in, out in the West, and it's slowly coming into Iraq and Karbala specifically, if you were to go in the West and you see a woman, the guys, what do they look at first if she's wearing tight clothes? They're going to look at her and her. So they're going to check that woman out. 
a hijab is supposed to keep that beauty away from the eyes of random men. Men that don't, uh, that are not related to her, either her husband or her uh, family members, not, not including uh, the cousins. So, mahrams, aka mahrams. So, this is what we need to understand that hijab is not only trying to cover up the head and the rest of the body is okay. The hijab is a way of behaving and accepting yourself for who you are, not for, you know, or, or not being someone that someone else wants you to be. You know, basically, it continues or it constitutes as an Islamic way of life. It's a statement which indeed should portray a certain attitude. For a person to wear hijab, automatically you represent Islam. Right away, if you're walking down a street, random street, even if they know something minimum about Islam, as soon as someone wearing a hijab walks down that street, they're going to say, what? She's a Muslim. So the way you present yourself, the way you behave in public, and in private as well. Private, we don't care, but you know, in, in public, in public, you need to present yourself in a way where people look at you and say, wow, Islam or that person embodies Islam in a way where she's not letting other men look at her, uh, you know, her, her beauty, so to speak. And at the same time, she has the manners with everyone. You know, right now, we see hijabi rappers. We see hijabi athletes, and that's perfect, you know, hijabi athletes, perfect. And of course, they're covered. But to go down to hijabi rappers, I mean, do you really understand what you're putting on your head? I'm not here to criticize, I'm not here to judge. But at the same time, when you take a responsibility, you have to be accountable for that responsibility if, 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 you, mis if you mistreat it. You know, if someone, for example, buys an animal and he mistreats that animal, animal rights will come and, and you know, they'll, they'll, they'll persecute that person either legally or they will take that animal away. The same thing. We're not here to take away your hijab, absolutely not. Who am I to do that? But at the same time, when you're wearing that hijab and misunderstanding the religion of Islam, taking Islam into your own hands, putting new laws into Islam like rapping, uh, which I don't know where it, where it does say. I never heard one of the poets to the Imam's rap, uh, so I don't know where you get the rapping from. Uh, but at the same time, we have to keep in mind that hijab is a way of, of behavior, how you present yourself uh, to everyone as a true Muslim. So the whole, for the most part, everyone is aware uh, of what hijab is right now. It's even in dictionaries right now if you go to oxford dictionary uh if you go to any dictionary.com and you write hijab it's recognized as a term right now where people can actually uh get to uh, learn about but for the last few years the hijab or hijab has been somewhat associated with fashion and you know with the different colors uh, different styles and so on and so forth you know, the different types of wraps, and that's okay. You know, when, when you're wearing something, do wear it in a presentable manner where you're not crossing the boundaries of Islam, as I mentioned earlier. Now, nowadays in the West, the boundaries of Islamic clothing uh, have become blurred over uh, with, you know, over the past few decades due to the controversial ideology of modest hijab fashion input into our daily lives. You know, you see those famous Instagram um, uh, personalities uh, who wear the hijab, but sometimes they wear it in a way. And at the same time, you as well, when, when you put a picture of yourself on Facebook uh, or on Instagram, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you're a role model for the younger generation. When they want to look at you, they want to look at you in a way where they say, you know what, that's who I want to be. If you're wearing the incorrect hijab, you're not only sinning. The incorrect hijab, you're not only sinning, but at the same time, when others take you as a role model, 
their sin is on your back as well. Now, as I mentioned, we're not here to judge, but there are laws that a person goes to, uh, ha has to abide by. Now, at the same time, if we were to look at uh, the Holy Quran, we would, Allah, we would find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning in chapter 33, verses 59, He says, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves of their outer garments. This is more suitable that they will be known and not be abused and ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Now, we don't, we don't really... How do, how do I explain this? A lot of people when they read this kind of verse, they think that, oh wow, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Muhammad to tell his wives to wear the proper hijab. Weren't they wearing proper hijabs? They're the Prophet's wives. They were. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the Prophet in a way where he wants others. He wants others to hear. You know, when I, for example, if I want to send a message to someone, right now, if I want to send a message to you guys, I would direct it publicly. Or if I want to send a message, for example, if one of the sisters at, at, at a party, uh, Islamic party of course, she's not wearing the proper hijab. If I sit there and talk to my wife or talk to my sister or who's ever there about the proper hijab, my family might be wearing the proper hijab, but I want to send a message to that person listening to us. But we just received a, vo a voice message from Batul from the USA. Wow, long time. All right, what does Batul say? Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ahmed. Wa alaikum, uh, alaikum. Batul from the US. Um, so tonight's question is what is hijab? And I can actually answer it normally and say it's a head covering, but I thought about it say for a couple one. of minutes. And I came to the conclusion that hijab is not just a covering of the hair and the body, but hijab is everything. There are many forms of hijab, and um, I'm going to name them, giving giving them my own uh, names, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. We have the brain hijab and the tongue hijab. Um, we need to cover our thoughts and what, what we say, to think of good things and not bad things, to not speak about people, to not use foul language, etc. Um, then we have the eye hijab. We need an eye hijab to protect our eyes from what we see. And we get pulled into this all the time. Uh, oh, look, she's pretty, he's hot, etc. And um, it gets us to do and see other bad things as well. Um, hijab is not just a head covering. It's actually a structure of our life to, give, to get us to be on the right path. Thank you. Yes, Batul, thank you very much uh, from the USA for, uh, for sharing that with us. Yes, yes, uh, very, actually very true because uh, honestly it does go back to the person wearing the hijab. Uh, a lot of people sometimes misunderstand the hijab and not the person wearing it. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit controversial where, uh, where you explain it. Thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. Now, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, what does he say about uh, hijab. He says, modesty is a part of Iman. Hijab is a great example of modesty. That's what we need to understand. When a person is modest, when a lady is modest, she's known that she's modest with her hijab. Of course, at the same time, there are modest women out there who don't wear the hijab. All due respect to you guys. You know, we, we, we highly adore you guys, but at the same time, our message goes out to the Muslim ladies, to our sisters. Where at the same time, as Batul said, modesty. Modesty is not, is not about covering your head. Uh, it's about, and not also covering your whole body. And then the inside uh, is, is, is rotten, God forbid. We have to always keep in mind is that if we're trying to cover up, let's try to, you know, better the way that we talk to people, be nicer to people, and so on and so forth. Now, what is the proper hijab? To sum it up, we have a few points for you right here. Number one, not to be rousing. This is important. Number two, not too tight to be showing the shape of the body. Uh, and, and absolutely true. Uh, number three, 
not see-through or thin material. If you're wearing see-through or thin material, I don't know why you're wearing hijab. But I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Number four, must be covering the entire body except for the face uh, and hands. And number five, the hijab should not be an adornment in itself. What do we mean by that? We're not meaning like don't go wearing a nice hijab or you know uh, a Louis Vuitton hijab. If you can, if, if, you, if you can afford it, buy it. But at the same time, don't make it into like an extra decoration. You know, when you have like a, a ring on the hand, it's 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 a, a sort of a, a, an adornment. Don't make the hijab like the ring you put on your hand. Wear it like you mean it. You know, wear it like like you own it. You know, you own that hijab. That's what you need to do. You need to own that hijab. Well, you do own it technically, you know, financially. Financial-wise, you do own it. But what I mean, like wear it like you own it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, th I, ho I, I hope you, you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But um, lastly for tonight, the only message that we can give out is do keep your hijabs on, of course. But at the same time, think of the ways um, how we can... Uh, take examples or take lessons from the people of the Ahl Bayt Now within these few nights of Muharram and you know, entering the month of Safar, the month of sorrow, um, we think of one lady when it comes to hijab. We think of Lady Zaina, peace and blessings be upon her. To the point where Zainab with all her greatness so to speak. And whatever I'm going to say, it's nothing compared to who Zainab is. That's Zainab, the daughter of Ali Nabi Talib, to the point where Imam Ali, when he used to walk and Zainab was with them, Imam Ali would be in front, Hassan and Hussein would be on her sides, and Al Abbas would be on the back. So even random men, and they would leave at night, random men won't even see her shadow. That's the modesty of Zainab and that's her requesting from her father not her father demanding this is why a lot of people hate the hijab nowadays because parents are demanding that their daughters wear hijab they're forcing hijab on their daughters that's why a lot of people a lot of girls right now are hating hijab be like Zainab get to understand teach your children hijab from a young age and help them accept it don't force it on them when you tell someone from a young age that fire is hot, he's going to know that fire is hot. And if you teach someone from a young age, if you teach a young girl from a young age, you tell her that hijab is a way of life for you and a, a, a bright future for you, then they'll get to, you know, that will sink in. And then when it's time for them to wear the hijab, they're fully prepared for it. So let's learn from the hijab of Zainab. We're not saying that don't go out and you know, let your brothers walk on the side and your, your other brother walk in the back so men don't see your shadow. We're not saying that. No one can get to the status of Zainab. But what we're trying to say is wear hijab in a, in, in a manner where other, when other people see you, they're going to say that's a true Muslim and follower of Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.